This is Look Out Valley News Spring 2013 with Ashley Allen, Ashley Walliser, Emily Frizzell, Brooke Mizell, Sean Kirk, Chase Clunch, Jamal Jones, and William Long. Welcome to the Lookout Valley News with Ashley and Ashley. The World Health Organization announced the launch of an investigation into a new deadly virus of bird flu. The total number of infections in China became 87. It is currently an animal virus that rarely affects humans. On Thursday, the government suspended wild bird cells to try to prevent the spread of the virus. Nobody knows why the infection is spreading amongst humans, but in affected countries, bird and poultry are now being banned. Some people believe that eating the chicken and birds are no problem at all, as they've eaten it every day. Some, on the other hand, are afraid to even eat an egg, fearing that they'll catch the disease from the eggs. The authorities are even monitoring more than a thousand people who have came into contact with people who have been infected. Studies, however, show that unlike previous outbreaks of the bird flu, the birds expected to have it have shown no sign of being diseased, raising more questions. A major fraud is sweeping the nation. Pilot Flying J's Jimmy Haslam, who is also the owner of the NFL's Cleveland Browns, is scamming customers. The staff was overheard talking about taking advantage of diesel customers. The FBI has began an investigation against the company, and several of its employees were suspended. The owner is fraught because their reputation has gone from best to worst in just eight days. However, they are accepting responsibility for the whole ordeal. Haslam, the owner, has denied any wrongdoing on his part and has refused any suggestion of him stepping down as the company owner. The company is now trying its best to rebuild relations with its customers and other companies to get back on top. He last stated that he was meeting with one of the many company heads that were cheated and is attempting to rebuild their relations one step at a time. Breaking news at Lookout Valley. A Bigfoot has been discovered in the woods. People speculate it could belong to a Bigfoot. Two boys found the decomposing foot last month and handed it in to the police who sent it off to be identified. Medical experts have since tested it, but say more examinations are needed to identify the foot. However, despite having five toes and resembling a large human foot, they have ruled out that possibility of it being Bigfoot's foot. Local police suggested it might be a bear's paw, but admitted it will take some time before we hear any official results. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, is the name given to a creature some people believe inhabit forests of North America. Now to Emily for the Upton Brothers. The Braves have a 19-5 record so far this season. They have hit 25 home runs in only 14 games. Evan Gaddis and Justin Upton are to be thanked for this. Justin Upton has hit nine home runs so far this season with many more to come. Evan Gaddis homered his first major league at bat. His past careers, he was working as a janitor and ski lift operator before he got back to baseball. Back to the Ashleys. And now to see some commercials. Do you have problems with cameras? Do you have problems with iPhones? We, we all have problems with technology! We all have problems with our cameras. We're not perfect. Oh, we all God. drop our phones every once in a while. But we have a solution for you! He fixes cameras, he fixes iPods, he fixes iPads! He's a trained Apple technician, he's a teacher, he does, does it all! You <laughs> Your very own 
Mr. Ford. Hello, Connie. Hello, Pink. We went to Mr. Ford and our phone works perfectly. Hi, I went to Mr. Ford and my camera works perfectly. And your very own Mr. Ford is so affordable. It's one payment of $49.99 or two low payments of $24.99. Call now at 1-800-555-5555. Again, that is 1-800-555-5555. And now to Pooh, Jamal, and Chase. Thank you, ladies. Now we're going to talk about fall sports. Football. Do you guys think the team will be uh, competitive next year? I think the team is going to be pretty competitive. You know, coming off a five and five year. Went to the first round playoffs. Um, a lot of young players got some experience that they need for years to come. You know, you got an eighth grade quarterback going to be a freshman next year. I expect big things out of him. Yeah, and this season, uh, season we had Jamal Jones sign with Carson Newman. You know, he. He rushed over a thousand yards, had a ton of touchdowns throughout the season, but I believe they had a lot of young players that, that got a lot of playing time this year that have helped them for the years to come. So I believe that they had a successful season this year for preparing for the next seasons to come. So they had a pretty successful season and they're gonna be great coming up. So next we're gonna talk about volleyball. Was the season successful even though the team didn't make it far in the tournament? Well, I believe it was very successful. Um, we had great fan support throughout the season. Um, you know, everybody loves to fire in the hole, cheers and everything. Yeah, they had some key wins, but they also had some key losses. But I believe it was a successful season because Ms. Cunner got them really ready and they, and they played hard throughout the season. So Yeah, and, e and even though they struggled a little bit, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing for the years to come. It, the, the adversity that they face, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help them in the seasons um, to come. You know, yeah. once they get down on themselves, they're going to always learn that they'll look back at this year for motivation. Mm -hmm. Now on to winter sports. Basketball. What do you? F what was the biggest obstacle for the boys team to overcome? Oh, the boys. We had to. We had to overcome scoring. Scoring. We lost our two. Two leading scores this summer. One. One transfer. One got hurt at the end of the season. Football. Uh. Donovan and Pooh helped us out a lot. You know, we we just couldn't. We just couldn't score the ball, but we did all right for the for the time being. And I believe even though with the, the two key losses that they faced at the beginning of the season, I, I feel like they could have still had a better season. Um, one thing in basketball is you have to have, um, you have to be together. And that's one thing that they, that chemistry. they missed. Chemistry, yeah. Like, that's one thing that they missed throughout the season. But I believe that they still had a successful season. You know, they made it to the district tournament. Um, but I believe that for the years to come that they're still going to be pretty good because they have some young guys coming back, Bailey and and Terry, so they're going to be pretty good in the years to come. So, all right. What about for the girls' team? What was their biggest obstacle? Um, well, they still have. They also had some key injuries at the beginning of the season. Um, Brianna and towards the middle of the season, um, Haley McBee, and but I feel like they that they played hard throughout the season. Um, they they gave it all every time they stepped their foot on the court. So they had a, a pretty successful season. Yeah, they have a certain intensity about them. You know, they have a, a scrappiness to them. You know, I like scrap. Yeah, they're very scrappy, and that's that's what the, that's what caused them to win games. And if they they if apply that to seasons to come, I expect them to be very successful because yeah. they only had two seniors. They're yeah, very they, young. They were really really young, but they had a successful season. So expect great things. Yeah. Now on to spring sports. First up, baseball. How do you feel the lack of seniority affected the team? Well, well, they had two two great seniors, uh, Levi Wallace and, and Tony Summerall, that that really helped the team mm -hmm. and and gave them leadership on the field and as well as off the field. And and they just they gave it their all throughout the season. Um, the season's still not over yet. We still have a couple of more games left, and I, I feel like they're gonna give a a strong ending to the season. So yeah, they're in a similar similar situation as football was in. You know, a lot of just just a couple scenes. You know, just. Not very, not very experienced, and this experience will help the young players in the seasons to come. A lot of, a lot of freshmen and eighth graders that never played in, um, before, they'll be good. Yeah. Next up, the track team. Did the competitors from Lookout Valley have an effect on the success of Red Bank's track? Well, they had, they had one, one of our fresh from the freshman class, Alexis Foster. She's, uh, she's a great, 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 great sprinter. Um, she leads the city right now in the 100 meters. And she helps the Red Bank relay team in a, in a four by one and, and different relays. And I feel that that she's been a big part of their success. I mean, um, uh, I expect big things out of her for the years to come. And just as a freshman, she's leading the city. That's that's amazing. So I expect I mean, big things for her. Yeah. yeah but for the boys, um, we're doing all right. We're we're hanging in there in the four by one. We we have the second best time in Chattanooga right now. Um, actually, three of the um, Lookout Valley sprinters are on the four by one relay team for Red Bank. So. 
It's actually three to Red Banks one on the on relay team. So mm -hmm. we're we're helping them out a lot. Very beneficial that we team up with them. Yeah. And finally, tennis. How did how did the change in the coach affect the team? Um, well, at first they had Miss Slatton as coach, and she had to lay off a year, and, and Coach Ward uh, uh, placed replaced her. So I believe that that he did a great job throughout the season. Um, that that they're young, even though they're young, and they still competed and they was competitive out there. So I believe they had a successful season. So yeah, I think Bill did a great job coaching. Um, they got a young kid named Austin Mays. You know, he's pretty he's pretty good. You know. He's just a freshman playing against a lot of seniors. I expect great mm -hmm. things for him to come. Yeah. I've seen him play. He got, he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that all the Lookout Valley sports have in common yeah. is they're all young. They're all you young. Know, a couple of seniors, but they're all young. So I believe in the, in the, in the near future, mm -hmm. you know, next year, even the year after, they're, mm -hmm. they're going to be, be a, a powerhouse in yeah. Chattanooga. So. Yeah, I expect that. All right, finally, why don't you guys uh, talk to me about the teachers and players basketball game? <laughs> boy, boy. Boy. Well, I'm not going to say too much but, on it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a tie game, even though we should have won. We should, I don't even know why it was a tie game. It's questionable calls. Questionable calls. Miss Connor, if you're looking at this, you didn't call every foul. Gosh. You didn't call every foul. Gosh, but, but, I mean, we played hard. You know, we didn't. We, we, we could have pressed them. You know, I, I took it easy on them as a coach. And, uh, yeah, as we, a coach. As a student, I felt like the student body would help, but we felt like we were playing a role I mean, game, I mean, you know? I was out there, as I as I was coaching, I noticed that some of the, the teachers were holding their bags and, and they was walking up and down the court. I could hear I could hear one of the teachers breathing all the way down on the other side of the court. So, you know, I didn't I didn't I didn't want to push the tempo any for the teachers. You know, <laughs> I, I took it easy on them. But I mean it was it was it shows school spirit because a lot of students come to the game, man. And let me let me comment on this. Mr. Ford, mm. he actually charged the students two dollars to come to the game. Now that's a bit expensive. Expensive, but it's a little high, little, little high, but you know he, he makes the calls and yeah. you know. But I, well, overall, be, I give it, a, I give it an A plus. It was an A plus, a, as as the, but the price, the but price the, was a bit. It's a little pricey, Mister Ford, but yeah. But I just want to before experience. we close this segment, I just want to give a shout out to all the all the sports teams. Um, you did great this season, and I expect big things out of you guys for next season. Um, anything like you say? Uh, just that you're going to do good next year. You're just young. Just hang in there. Got great potential. Yeah, this is William Long. Jamal Jones. Thanks for your time, fellas. Now back to you in the studio. Kate Hudson has been engaged since the spring of 2011, but she apparently is in no rush to get married. She says she has been too busy and her fiancé, Matthew Bellamy, agrees. They say that they'll figure it out. They apparently look forward to it, but it's been over two years. Kristen Chenoweth thinks that she has a belly even though she weighs 88 pounds. People think that she has issues with her body because she is tiny and definitely has no muffin top. The actress claims that in tight skinny jeans her muffin top shows. She said she would like to have a body like Nicole Kidman who looks good in anything. And that's all for the first edition of the Lookout Valley News. See you next year.